Hello from Edinburgh, Scotland. We arrived here yesterday and we're going to be here for a few days. It's actually the busiest time of year in Edinburgh. It's the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which happens every August. But we've just about found parking and we are so excited to explore the city. This is Edinburgh Castle behind us. This is my first time in Scotland. It's my yeah. 61st country, so I'm excited to go explore. Let's go and get some coffee. So the heat wave in the UK has subsided a little bit, which is nice. Obviously the sun was incredible, but it's good for there to be a bit of rain and just for things to cool off a little bit. Thankfully though, it's not chucking it with rain today. I think tomorrow there's gonna to be some more rain. Rainy weather is far more common in Scotland, so any sunny days are a treat really. This coffee shop is called Lowdown Coffee and uh, got recommended it by Steve. A lot of you may know our friend Steve Booker. He's a coffee connoisseur. Anyway, he said, I quote, this spot is legit. So uh, I'm gonna try the coffee now. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is incredible coffee. We also got the vegan carrot cake. If you're in Edinburgh, I think this is the spot for a little coffee break. This rainbow is unreal. It is absolutely stunning. Wow. It's already quite late in the day and we're gonna have an early dinner and we've just been trying to find where the best place is because there's so many options but tell us about this place we're going to. Well I just searched vegan in Google Maps and the reviews on this place are unbelievable. People are like I've been to hundreds of vegan restaurants, this is the best I've ever been to. Like insane reviews so we have very high hopes. Hopefully they're not overbooked because it's obviously the busiest time and hopefully we can get in but it looks really good. Okay, they are fully booked out, but they said we could sit if we could eat in under an hour, which I think we can do. But if you're coming here, make sure you book. I ordered the garlic focaccia, and it's a whole pizza. <laughs> That's your starter. This is just my starter. And I got the bruschetta. Wow, that vegan cheese is unreal. Honestly, it was really hard to choose, but we went with lasagna and a veggie pizza. Wow. It just tastes like we're in Italy. That's the best company you can get. So one of the things we often do when we eat out now is we buy two meals that we want to share. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to share half the lasagna and half the pizza. Wow. That was delicious. I would recommend going there. There was a few minor critiques we had, but overall, I would give it an eight out of 10. And 100% you have to get that focaccia garlic starter mm -hmm. thing. That was, that was a 10 out of 10. There's a cyclist and a kilt. We've just walked up to the base of the castle and we're just watching the sunset. As you know, on our travels, we've been collecting fridge magnets to put in our school bus and in the van. When we don't forget. <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. forgotten a few times. But anyway, we just remembered. Yeah. We just popped into a little touristy shop and got a Scotland fridge magnet. We forgot to do it in Wales. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we have come back to the van. This is where we parked. I don't know whether we were allowed to. We read all the signs because some of these roads are closed. It's the moment of truth. Is there a parking ticket? No parking ticket. Fantastic. We've decided to pace ourselves for the weekend. This was just a very chilled start to our time in Edinburgh. We are now going to take you to this little secret spot that we found because it's a fringe festival in Edinburgh, which I'll explain a bit more about what that actually is tomorrow. None of the campsites nearby were available, fully booked out. And that was the plan this month to really just stay in spots which have all the facilities, like official campsites with toilets and showers. Anyway, we couldn't do that here. So we found this really cool spot about 15 minutes outside the centre. It's a leisure centre car park and we stayed here last night and in the morning you can pay two pounds to use the shower and toilet. So that is the plan for tomorrow. We can just duck in in the morning, use the shower and toilet and then go back into Edinburgh for more adventures. So today's video is sponsored by Get Your Guide, the best place to unlock the world's most unforgettable experiences for travellers. When me and Raya travel, we often want to find the coolest experiences in the places we go and the best way is to connect with locals. So Get Your Guide have 60,000 curated experiences, many run by local experts. 
There are 3,600 destinations worldwide to choose from. And this weekend, we're in Edinburgh. So we found this really exciting Harry Potter walking tour. As you know, Raya is a Harry Potter fanatic, so we cannot wait. So I'm gonna book that experience in for tomorrow and I'm gonna show you how easy it is. So check this out. Get your guide. So Edinburgh, United Kingdom. So we'll do tomorrow. And then you can filter through what time you want to do it, morning, afternoon, the location of what you want to do. This is really funny. Out of the six topics of interest in Edinburgh, one of them is Harry Potter. Outdoor, nature, TV, movies, Harry Potter, drinks, water activities. There's lots of different topics, different categories, your max and min price, language, duration of the tour. Basically, there's loads of options. Then once you've found the tour you want to do, so this one, Edinburgh Harry Potter Magical Guided Walking Tour, select that, read all the information, and then book now to adults, boom. We don't need to print any tickets. There's 24 hour support and free cancellation up to 24 hours before. So we've booked it in for tomorrow. We cannot wait to share this experience with you guys. And we'll see you in the morning. We had a lovely night's sleep last night at the Leisure Centre mm -hmm. and we have driven into Edinburgh Town Centre now. It is a lovely day mm -hmm. and before we go on our walking tour, we're going to go grab some lunch. Yeah. How are you feeling today? I'm good. I'm so glad that we got to shower. That was a beautiful warm shower. It's the little things when you live in a van. <laughs> so I'm feeling good and I'm so grateful for the sun. Mm. So let's go explore. Let's do it. <laughs> we also have just seen this poster for a circus act tonight, which we might try and book and go and see. By the way, we mentioned it was Fringe, but I don't think we explained what it is. So basically during the whole month of August, something called the Fringe Festival here in Edinburgh. It's the world's biggest arts festival the whole month. And there's like 55,000 performers, I think we just looked up. So yeah, there's a bit of everything. Comedy, dance, um, theater, musicals, so much stuff. And if you're walking around in Edinburgh in August, you will get handed so many flyers. There's shows happening like all day, every day, all different hours of the day. Honestly, it's been a little overwhelming. We haven't been to anything yet because like yesterday, we just got handed so many flyers. How do you choose? Yeah. How do you choose? And uh, to be honest, I'm a little nervous, especially with comedy. I'm a little nervous to like walk into something and then quickly realize it's not my style of comedy. And then you're stuck there for like an hour or two. So I kind of want to like ask for recommendations or something. But one of our friends did say a circus show or something is kind of always a win. So we might try to do something like that. <laughs> what have we just found? It's so cute. The smallest pub in Scotland. Look what it's called, the Wee Pub. Oh. Okay, what did we get? A hummus and veggie sandwich and avocado toast. We're just going to share them both. We have just entered the Royal Mile. This is the main high street of Edinburgh where I think it's pedestrianised. Yeah, it's pedestrianized, it's like a thousand people here. This is where all the kind of most touristy bits are. But this is where our tour is starting, the other end of this. One of the things I'm interested in getting is an item of clothing with the McGregor Tartan, which is my family clan. This is Amy, our tour guide, and she's about to take us Hi. on our tour. Welcome to my beautiful city of Edinburgh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so pretty fascinating. We were just told the Balmoral Hotel, which overlooks the main train station, for six months was the place that J.K. Rowling stayed while she wrote the Deathly Hallows, the final Harry Potter book. And she signed her name saying, this is where J.K. Rowling wrote Deathly Hallows and now they've decorated that whole hotel room and renamed it the J.K. Rowling room. Okay, we just learned a few more things. First, I didn't realize Steven Spielberg was originally supposed to direct Harry Potter, but he had a lot of things that J.K. Rowling did not agree with. So apparently he wanted Robin Williams to play Hagrid, 
which just doesn't really make sense to me. And JK had already chosen who she wanted to play with Hagrid. And then a few other things. He said he wanted Ron to be American. And apparently that was like the final straw. But anyway, it's just crazy because obviously like if you know Harry Potter, you know it so well that just the thought of changes like that, that just does not make sense. So this Chinese restaurant up there used to be a cafe in the early 90s and was the first place that JK Rowling came and finished the first Harry Potter book. She used to write it up there. JK, she was writing her books in the Nicholson Cafe and then a few feet away there's a plaque that says McGonagall. Coincidence or not? Although I'm not a hardcore Harry Potter fan, this tour is actually fascinating. And I love that we're getting taken around by Amy, who's a local, she grew up here. So she's got loads of little nuggets of super interesting facts about Edinburgh and little stories, so cool. The motto for Hogwarts is never tickle a sleeping dragon. So it could be JK's way of just making fun of the mottos. So that's their school motto, yeah. never, never tickle, <laughs> never a, tickle sleeping. a sleeping dragon. So that is a good piece of advice there. Like that. What was your school's? Uh, dare to be true. Mine was Endeavour and Prosper. Wow. This chess set was made in the 12th century. It looks very similar to a chess set in the first movie, The yeah. Philosopher's Stone. Although we chose to do a Harry Potter tour, we're actually learning a lot about the history as well. And if you're more of a general history nerd, it's just so much here to learn. So what does it remind you of? That door, like with the snakes that open up. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if I was writing like a magical fantasy book, I would definitely come to a museum to get ideas. There's so much like, there's cool like swords and obviously just like ancient things. Wow, even like this. Do you know what I mean? Like I would just walk around and just get ideas for things to put in. I get it. <laughs> Is that the Philosopher's Stone maybe inspiration? So we're just walking around this graveyard and the other side of this fence is the George Heriot School which is potentially one of the inspirations behind Hogwarts and it was originally set up for orphans and kids from poor families and when students join the school they're sorted into four houses which also I was when I was at school. I was in the Hawk House and I think the fact J.K. Rowling's first daughter got a scholarship to come to this school was probably also why some of the inspiration came from it. Voldemort's yeah. real name was Thomas Riddle yeah. and that's exactly. Thomas Riddle's grave. So why JK's like denying that she's used these names, especially in the graves, uh, the graveyards, pr probably out of respect for the families? I would be quite happy, pleased if I was a riddle, I'd be like, yeah, sure, use my name. But, but she used the him for the villain. Yeah. <laughs> He's like exactly. the name of the villain. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yes. One more name inspiration from Mad Eye Moody for the Irish spelling now with a Y at the end. Yeah, so this is the stadium is not here all year round, it's just here for the Edinburgh tattoo. And yeah, you can see they've got the flags on top as well. A lot of similarities there. We so actually already noticed that, we were like, oh, that looks like a Quidditch yeah. kind of arena. So here we are at the famous Victoria Street in Edinburgh, which we could say is used for inspiration in the Harry Potter series. If we're going back to the movies, Harry and Hagrid, they go into Leaky Cauldron Pub, they walk out the back of the pub into the courtyard. Hagrid taps with his pink umbrella onto the brick wall and it opens out onto a twisty, cobbly, beautiful street that twists up. So, very similar uh, location here. I love how it's like a dragon coming through the ceiling. Yeah. I found this really cool 
postcard of Edinburgh, like Harry Potter map. These are all the places that we went today. Like the graveyard, Tumbril Grave, the school. Wow. Right, that's the end of the part of our tour with Amy and we're now going to the go and castle. see the castle. Yeah. That's the first part of our Get Your Guys tour that we booked. I am amazed because we didn't actually manage to book a private tour but it just turned out yeah. that no one else had booked today so we kind of accidentally got a private tour which was amazing. But they do have private tours available if you want to try to book that. Yeah. yeah. And then I also feel like there's something really amazing about um, getting a tour around by a local yeah. and getting that kind of inside knowledge and also not having to worry about trying to figure stuff out yourself because someone else is showing you everything and telling you all the cool facts. So, And outside of the Harry Potter stuff, obviously Amy grew up here so she just kept telling us tons of recommendations of like where to eat and what to do and it's just, yeah, it just feels like you have like a local giving yeah. you all the insider tips. It's a really good job that we had booked with our Get Your Guide tour entry to the castle because it was sold out so if we'd spontaneously wanted just to come we wouldn't have been able to get tickets so i'm glad we did we're walking over to see the quidditch field from above and i, I don't know if this is a big reason why i love harry potter obviously there's a lot but i remember reading the fourth book the goblet of fire and they mentioned bulgaria if you remember they have the i think it's the quidditch world cup and bulgaria is one of the I think it's Bulgaria versus Ireland and at the time I had just moved to the States from Bulgaria no one that I went to school had heard of Bulgaria but I just like couldn't believe that my little country was in Harry Potter <laughs> and I remember watching the movie and obviously like all of our flag colors and stuff and it was just really exciting so this just brings me back to that obviously in the movie it's like so much bigger than this but this is definitely the vibe <laughs> seen this little dog cemetery. It's <laughs> making me cry. Look at the tiny tombstones. I can't. I wasn't emotionally prepared for that. This is the biggest cannon I've ever seen. Oh it's huge. Oh. It's over 500 years old. I just read that. Um, yeah, this is the size of the cannonballs, check it out. I don't even think I could lift one of those. That's bad. So, unfortunately, there's no filming allowed in quite a few of the areas of the castle. Um, so, we can't show everything, but if you come here, you'll, you'll get to experience a bit more than you're seeing here. Also, this is probably the busiest the castle ever gets. Obviously, it's fully booked. It's the absolute busiest time of year in Edinburgh. And I'd say if you're coming for more of the historical tours or some of the tours you can book on Get Your Guide, you might want to come a different time of year. This is specifically amazing for the Fringe Festival, but maybe September would be better. This door was used for over 50 years and held captive for thousands of prisoners. This is graffiti from the prisoners from hundreds of years ago. So they've recreated what the prisons would have looked like here. And there's all these hammocks and kind of props and stuff, but it also smells really like of really, really old material. Like it's hard to describe, but Feels very authentic, I like it. Wow, check this out. This looks down into one of the dungeons in the castle. So, just as we're leaving the castle, they popped into the cafe and I noticed they had some iron brew, 
Now, for those of you that don't know, this is a very Scottish fizzy drink, a soda. I'm gonna give Raya a little taste. I haven't had one in years. Let me have a little sip. It's a pretty distinct taste. Do you wanna have okay. a taste? Sure. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna like it. Okay. Oh, it's bright orange. Bright orange. <laughs> it's kind of like root beer, right? Kind of. Yeah. So it's kind of like bubble gum mixed with medicine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my, but I'm not a huge soda drinker, so don't get offended. It's just not my vibe. <laughs> found some Harry Potter books that were published in 1997, like some of the first that were ever published. Look, it even says, they're trying to promote the second one. <laughs> this is way before the films. Wow. So we're arriving at our first Fringe Festival event. I'm hoping there's tickets. It's called Cirque Berserk. first fringe show I'd give it a 10 out of 10 I absolutely love that mm -hmm. and circus shows always just amaze me at the capability of humans and what you can yeah. train your body to do I kept thinking like is it too late for me to start like stretching more <laughs> I was like oh god I'm almost 30 am I ever gonna be able to like do a split I don't think it's too late I think no? we can train ourselves to do the splits okay <laughs> that's it we're gonna get more flexible yeah okay <laughs> once we get some routine in our life yeah <laughs> so when we were looking for fun activities to do in edinburgh one of the biggest attractions was a place called camera obscura and the world of illusions so thankfully they're open till 10 pm so we thought we'd go check it out as our last activity of the evening <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so good. My arms are so long. These are just cameras like of the street and you can zoom in like crazy and just stalk people. This is a thermal imaging camera. <gasps> Look at me. Oh, it's chilly up here. Yeah. So 
there's these binoculars for you to look over the city, but literally across the street is someone's apartment and there's a guy sitting on his couch just swiping on Tinder. I can see it, it's so creepy. Oh, he's swiping a lot of people. Been ushered into a row. Well, basically, this is a big Victorian camera. This one was built here in 1853. At the top of this tower, about seven meters up, we have a mirror. So the sunshine hits the mirror, it reflects down through three lenses and gives us a live image of Edinburgh on our wooden table painted white. As you can see, this church blocks my entire view of the top, but we call it now the hub and it's used as the headquarters for the International Festival. <gasps> oh my gosh, that is so cool. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> Not press. No, I'm pressing it. <laughs> I feel like there's two types of people. I would not press it. Really? Except, yeah, but you 100% would. It's of course. So I feel very. Wow. <laughs> I lost my balance. Oh my goodness. I can't do it. Whoa. We're going into the mirror maze. I want to go straight ahead, but... Okay, that's a mirror. That's a mirror. Oh my goodness. Wait, wait, is it this way? I think it's this way. You could film such a good music video here. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> that was so fun. So we're back yeah. in the van. Yeah. We've back to our spot. But mm -hmm. this is our last night in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and all the fun. Thanks again to Get Your Guide mm -hmm. for sponsoring this video and for helping us have a really fun day in Edinburgh. And thank you, Amy, for being an awesome guide. Yeah. <laughs> showing us around <laughs> and being patient every time we stop to take photos. If you're not subscribed already, please do, because we've got one more stop on this UK road trip. Mm -hmm. We're heading even further north into Scotland and it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>